Hey everyone, welcome back to Homestead Corner. Today I want to talk about 10 medicinal herbs that I think everyone should have in their survival gardens. So when we are planning our survival gardens, I think it is so important to incorporate herbs into those survival gardens. Those are things that we are really going to need. Not only do they make your food tasty, most have lots of medicinal properties and can be used for more than one thing. And that is always wonderful. And having these medicinal herbs can really help your family through sicknesses and different things like that, help calm your nerves. There's lots and lots of uses for herbs and figuring out which herbs are best for your family is really important. Today I wanted to share 10 herbs that I think should be in every survival garden because they are so useful and help with so many different things. So when you are digging through those seeds, you wanna make sure that you have got a good selection of herbs. Herbs are really easy to grow. Some are annual, some are perennials. So those annuals aren't gonna come back year after year, but a couple of them that I really like are if you just leave some of them, they will seed themselves, which is wonderful. So let's get into this and see which 10 herbs I think are the most important for your survival garden. So the first one is oregano. Oregano is really easy to grow. You can start it from seed. You can, my oregano that I have in my garden, I went into the produce section um, at our local store and bought one of the little organic plants that are like 250. And I think they're 279 now, but that little plant has grown into a bush this big. And I keep cutting stuff off and giving it to friends and putting a piece over there and moving some over there. And that thing just keeps growing and expanding. It is a perennial, so it will continue to keep growing. Oregano can be a little invasive. So if you don't want it to get too big, you may want to consider putting it in a pot and growing it in some kind of container. So it's it can definitely take over spaces. So well, we just keep cutting at it and giving pieces to people that need it. And you know, we don't care, but cut a big chunk off and move it somewhere else. But it gives us plenty of oregano and you can make oils, tinctures, all sorts of stuff. It is excellent for a whole variety of issues, um, especially joint and muscle issues. Um, I love to let some of mine flower. The bees absolutely love it. And those flowers are so delicious in teas. We like to add it into teas. And with all different ways of using it, you can get all the health benefits from them. Just picking it off and eating it fresh out of the garden is great as well. Number two is chamomile. Chamomile is so wonderful. It's such a soothing, calming scent and it is delicious in teas. We use it a lot for teas. You can also use it for skin issues, stomach issues, all sorts of stuff. Chamomile is just wonderful. We love to put it in, um, make oils and make salves with it, and I love to put it in my teas as well. Um, chamomile is one of those flowers that's annual, but instead of replanting it every year, if you just leave some of the flowers out there, we clip and clip and clip, and when we're coming towards the end of it, we like to leave the rest of it, and that way it dries, it drops the seeds, and it comes up next year, and I don't have to put any effort into it. It's really quite simple. So I love that part of it, so you don't have to replant it every year. Number three is lavender. Lavender is another one of those delicious flowers in teas. You can drink it, you can make tinctures, oils, tons of things. It's very calming and soothing because it actually, the scent of it helps slow down the activity in your nervous system so you can get better rest and relaxation, which is really wonderful. So lavender is a perennial, so once you plant it, it's gonna keep coming back. And it does get a little bit bigger, but they kind of stop 
you know, when they get about that big. So you can just leave some good space around it. You don't usually have to cut them or move them or anything like that. Number four is peppermint. Peppermint is wonderful for those tummy issues, headaches, all sorts of stuff. Lots of people like to drink it in teas. Um, it's cooling and peppermint is wonderful. And that is another um, perennial. Once you plant it, you don't have to keep replanting it. It will keep coming back. The only thing about peppermint is you really have to contain it because it will go wild and take over your whole yard. It's crazy. So peppermint and any mints for that matter, I have found um, putting them in containers is the best way to go or in like a small area that it's okay if it takes it over, like a little stoned in area um, or something like that. You want it to not have anything around it because it just, it goes underground and just keeps coming up everywhere. <laughs> Number five is comfrey. Comfrey is a wonderful herb. It also is invasive and it will spread and spread. So you have to be careful with it. Um, I heard there's a kind that doesn't spread, but I have not grown that. The one that I got was just roots from someone I knew that was moving. They were digging some up and gave me a bag full of roots. I don't know that you could even kill comfrey. It just keeps, it's so strong. It is such a wonderful plant. They have used it previously. You can take the whole leaves and dry them. And if you have a fractured bone or anything like that, you can wrap it, you can make a poultice, all sorts of stuff with it. Um, it's good for a host of things. It's wonderful for your compost. It's wonderful for your chickens. Uh, you can use it for toothaches. There's just so many different things. Comfrey is absolutely wonderful. Again, it's excellent in salves for um, all, a host of skin issues, all sorts of stuff. So we like to make sure that we have comfrey growing in the garden and um, it just keeps coming back year after year. And you can dig up the roots and break them in half and cut them with a shovel. And I don't think you could kill comfrey. <laughs> I don't know if it's use of humanly possible to kill it. It's a great herb and it is very strong. It just grows and grows and it can grow in partial shade as well, which is nice. Number six is calendula. Calendula is absolutely wonderful for the skin. It is great in diaper rash ointment. Um, you can use it for a host of different things. It's very soothing when you have um, scrapes and bruises and things like that. We like to use it in our salves. Um, it's just excellent on the skin for all sorts of different rashes and skin issues, dryness, eczema. Um, it works wonderfully. So um, this one is an annual, so saving the little heads and drying them and getting the seeds out of there. You wanna let it go to a full bloom and get the seeds. Um, but when you dry it, you can kind of shake those seeds off and then keep the head for your medicinal uses and you've got a little bag of seeds so you can replant it every year. Number seven, thyme. Thyme is another wonderful herb. It is good for your heart. It's heart healthy. It is all kind, it's great for infections, uh, small infections, things like that. You can use it for a whole host of things and it's delicious on your food. And if we are in an emergency situation, we're gonna want as many different flavors as we can get into our foods. And having these herbs, growing them, is making it so you don't have to try and find it or buy it. So thyme is an excellent one to have. And that is a perennial, it will keep coming back. It's like a little bush and it just keeps coming back every year, year after year. We cut it back and it grows some more and cut it back and it grows more. And it's one of those plants we have all over the place too. Number eight is mulin. Mulin is excellent for lung issues. It will help clear out your lungs. It is extremely good for that. You can use it in oils, tinctures, um, saws. There's so many different things you can do with it. Um, it really is an excellent one. Around here, it grows 
just wild all over the place in a sunny, sandy area. You see it driving down the road, there's just tons of it. I don't like to pick the stuff on the side of the road, but if you can get away from the road, you know, because you don't want all that toxins from the cars going by and everything in your medicine, that's not good. You can grow it really easily. It loves well-draining, sandy soil. It just loves it and it thrives. Number nine, lemon balm. Lemon balm is another excellent one. It's great for colic for babies. It's good for indigestion. It is calming and soothing, wonderful in teas. You Again, you can make tinctures, oils, all kinds of stuff. You can eat it straight off the plant. It's got a little teeny lemony flavor. It's really excellent herb to have, and it really is another calming, soothing one that can help with anxiety and things like that. So lemon balm is a perennial. Ours comes back year after year. I don't have to keep replanting it. So I really like the perennials and the annuals that drop their own seeds <laughs> because it makes it simple. Herbs are probably the easiest plants to grow as well. And number 10, number 10 is going to be dill. Dill is wonderful for bruises, for all sorts of stuff. It's high in vitamin C and it has all kinds of good properties to it. It's delicious, fresh in all kinds of salads and things like that. Throw some on your fish, anything that you're eating, dill is absolutely wonderful. It's also excellent for your pickling, anything like that. So if you love dill pickles, or you can pickle just about anything, you know, carrots, cauliflower, eggs, cucumbers, anything. You can pickle all these vegetables and having a good supply of dill is wonderful and it's so good for you. We A lot of times our dill is not ready when our cucumbers or anything else we want to pickle is ready. So we dry it and just use it dried. That works as well. And dill is another one of those annuals that if you just leave a few of the flower heads, it will replant itself, the seeds will drop, and next year it will come up. I usually have it scattered all around because the seeds blow around and it just lands up wherever it lands up. And we're okay with that. If it volunteers somewhere, I'm keeping it. <laughs> and that is it for my 10 medicinal herbs that I think should be in every survival garden. Herbs really are probably the most easiest thing to grow, and most of them do love sandy, well-draining soil. Um, they like some soil in there, but uh, a lot of sand in it is okay because you really want it to drain well. They don't like to sit in really wet, wet land. So um, super easy to grow, really wonderful to have to help heal your family. You can use them in so many different ways and they are just excellent to have. And that is it for today. I hope you like this video and I hope to see you at the next one. Bye.